I would now like to introduce that we have a very special guest joining us tonight. And I believe she is joining us on video. So I would like all of you in your, wherever you are right now to help me welcome Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, who is a longtime supporter of Capital Pathways and a really perfect example of how a professional of color can break barriers and rise to amazing leadership positions. Lieutenant Governor, thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, and I'm really honored and humbled to be able to uh, join all of you uh, today virtually. I love Capital Pathways, and so um, it is bittersweet that we can't be together uh, in person uh, today, but I am really uh, just so excited to be able to be um, at this, this collective table uh, with all of you and welcome uh, to my kitchen. Um, there has never been a more important time for the voices of people of color, indigenous folks, uh, to be part of um, to, to be part of government and to be part of civic life. And uh, we have been given an opportunity, and we cannot let it it pass us by. Um, I, I know that uh, I'm a super fan of the of the Citizens League, and uh, in particular of uh, Fuhua and and this program. And I know. Uh, that there's a transition in leadership, um, and I know that that, that uh, the Citizens League will, will continue to be in good hands um, because the foundation has been been, been laid uh, to do really do uh, incredible, incredible work. Um, this doesn't happen on accident. Uh, I have to tell you that um, there isn't a roadmap uh, for, uh, for people of color and for Indigenous folks to get engaged and involved in government. In fact, uh, there are many obstacles that are put in our way. And I would say this, um, I'm the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Minnesota. That was certainly not my, my dream um, or uh, you know, what I grew up as a, a little girl thinking I would become, um, but it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And one of the things that happens to me every single day um, when we were at the Capitol uh, before COVID-19, but I still carry that weight and responsibility is that um, when I walk in the door of, of the state capitol, I take uh, two breaths, two deep breaths. The first breath is to acknowledge the responsibility of uh, the weight of, of that responsibility to serve Minnesotans. And the second breath is a breath of protection um, because I know that I am walking into a building that was not created by us or for us or with us, but in too many instances was created to eliminate, erase, uh, and, and silence us. And by us, I mean people of color and indigenous folks. And so the role of Capital Pathways is to really create that space and to ensure that we are holding the door wide open um, for all of you and for folks in our community to know that you absolutely have every right to be there and to have a say in the future of the state. You know, I want to, I also want to say that, you know, as we, we reckoned with COVID-19, knowing that some folks uh, said that, you know, it was a great equalizer because anyone could catch it. Many of the folks on this call know that it wasn't the great equalizer. Um, what COVID-19 did was lay bare the inequities uh, that are part of, uh, that are part of the state and has exacerbated many of the inequities in our state. And then additionally, we saw the world was watching. We saw the murder of George Floyd and the trauma, the re-traumatization that folks experienced um, and the, the horror as we all watched for eight minutes and 46 seconds as his life was taken from him in front of us all the anger, the rage, and the despair, and the trauma um, has clearly uh, impacted all of us. And, and it's important to know, though, that the murder of George Floyd didn't happen in a vacuum. It's not a one-off. It is not something that there are suddenly leaders who um, see that there's a problem with racism, and it's literally killing us. Some folks have just come around to that fact when many people who are in this, this community and in this, this meeting know that to be true. The COVID-19 pandemic and the murder of George Floyd 
have laid bare the systemic inequities that have been simmering just under the surface for way too long and have come to challenge us to make that change for our future generations of Minnesotans and to do it now. Minnesota is a great place to live, to work, to raise a family if you're white. And if you're a person of color, if you uh, live in a particular zip code, the opportunities that you have to thrive are limited. And in fact, the impact on your ability to simply live or survive are in question. And so now more than ever before, we need to listen to people most directly impacted. That is my cat. <laughs> uh, welcome to my kitchen again. Um, but we need to listen to the people who are most directly impacted. Uh, in order to make decisions that are grounded in the knowledge and the wisdom and the passion of community. In fact, the governor and I uh, just got done with a press conference in partnership with the members of the People of Color and Indigenous Caucus, of which I was a founding member, to, to lay out our priorities for police reform and accountability. These are things that are not new. They are things that, frankly, people of color and Indigenous folks have been asking for for years. And now we are in a place where we must take action and we must move. And so you all have the opportunity now to, as the time with Capital Classways is coming to a close, to take, to take steps and to reimagine what a future can look like, where there is policy, there is government, there is civic life that is responsive to the very needs of the community who have too often been silenced and shut out. You may have noticed uh, that there was recently a statue that came down uh, at the Capitol. And as a native woman who serves an elected office in the state of Minnesota, I was asked about my opinion on that statue. I cannot say that I'm sad that it came down. But what I can tell you is that we are in a moment and in a time where we need leaders to care less about statues and to care more about the murder of George Floyd and the systemic changes that need to occur that we are all responsible for in this moment. And you are the leaders who can help get us there. I know that you face incredible challenges. This has been just for myself as a leader. There's no roadmap. I'm not sure how to do it, but I try to talk to folks. I try to listen to my heart and to my instinct to move forward in community and to do it together. I hope that in this moment you see the importance of having Black, Brown, and Indigenous people as part of civic life and as part of government. It's truly going to make a change, and we need you. I need you. Frankly, I need some backup, and we need more folks in the Capitol. We have added additional folks to the People of Color and Indigenous Caucus, and we need more people who are lobbying, advocating, running for office, um, working uh, in policy all across the state. Um, because if we're truly going to achieve uh, the, the beauty of this democracy, our government needs to accurately reflect the people it seeks to represent. So I, um, hugs and high fives to all of you. Uh, I just think that the Capital Pathways program is incredible. And for all of you to serve in this role and to serve in this uncertain time, um, you have been uh, given um, skills uh, that you probably didn't even know that you needed to now be able to apply and help us as we begin to rebuild and reimagine uh, a state of Minnesota where we truly, we don't Minnesota nice our ways through this, but we truly center people of, of color, indigenous folks as part of the solution and of co-creators of the government that we all seek to, uh, to have and, and to imagine. So I am grateful uh, for all of you. Um, I know that this is not an easy time and that it can be easy to feel, feel hopeless, but I hope that you know that the 94 other people who are part of this conversation uh, tonight are all cheering you on. I am cheering you on. Um, I'm down for cups of coffee with folks who are, are interested in talking about socially distance, are interested in talking about um, how to navigate these systems because uh, I struggle every day. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, I have imposter syndrome like so many leaders. Um, and if you suffer from that too, just know that you are where you are supposed to be. We need you in this work. Uh, we are grateful for uh, the, the sacrifice that you have made to serve your community and to serve in this role. And we're cheering you on. And with that, um, 
I'm really excited to also be able to proclaim uh, today, June 11th, as Capital Pathways Day in the state of Minnesota. Um, so just thank you so much for uh, the work that you have done, but more importantly, uh, thank you for the work that you will do to ensure that Minnesota is a place uh, that truly embraces equity and that we build a collective future uh, where people of color, indigenous folks are centered and not sidelined. Chimi Gwich, thank you so much. And Amanda, I'll throw it back to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor. I really appreciate your honest, just so real and hopeful comments and for being with us today. And I just want to say so sincerely that we are here with you. And I have no doubt in my mind that our Capital Pathway alum are also standing with you um, in this work. So thank you for everything that you do.